Yeah, no worries. I'm, go I'm gonna uh, let Rizzo kick it off whenever he feels like it. Yeah, sure. I guess let's dive in. Appreciate everybody joining us for this Bitcoin Magazine Clubhouse. Uh, obviously, uh, you know, um, getting a lot of requests uh, from Magazine readers Clubhouse, these days uh, to really obviously. kind of understand what's going on with Taproot. Uh, obviously, would highly recommend everybody in the audience right now to check out Aaron Van Wordham's uh, past work on the subject. Written a number of uh, definitive things on the topic at this point, dating back to, uh, I think your first article on it was 2019. Is that is that right, Aaron? Um, my very first article was just what is Taproot basically, and I think that was early 2018. Hmm. Yeah, so way back, right? So we've got what is Taproot. Uh, there's an article from 2019 about you know Taproot's coming, uh, and now of course you know we're dealing with Taproot activation. Uh, people may be familiar with the debates earlier this year about uh, how activation should proceed, and uh, now we've we've sort of uh, our uh, heading towards a signaling period where there is a, a, a two uh, software implementations uh, that are giving users the option to uh, proceed with how to activate. But uh, Aaron, maybe you want to just kind of kick off with some broad strokes for folks who aren't familiar with, uh, you know, just all the benefits that Taproot is going to provide, uh, you know, if and when and activate. Yeah, so I'll give a very brief recap, sort of the story so far. So yeah, Taproot is a proposed protocol upgrade for Bitcoin which offers a very efficient and privacy preserving smart contracts. So Bitcoin already does support smart contracts. It has basic smart contract, smart contract tools and Taproot um, sort of offers a solution to make this more efficient, compact and privacy preserving. Now, the next question is, it's developed, the code is ready. It has been included in the previous, uh, the, the latest Bitcoin core release, uh, which is sort of the de facto reference implementation for Bitcoin. And then the next question is, okay, how do you get this upgrade live on the network? Which is a very interesting question for a project like Bitcoin, because Bitcoin doesn't have any single person to decide that you know Bit bitcoin doesn't have a jerome powell to dictate the rules or a vitalik buterin it's it's a pretty decentralized thing and somehow the whole network needs to come to consensus on the new rules if if there's part of the network switching before another part that could get risky with the potential chain splits now what was figured out years ago and actually pete rizzo and i published an article on that a couple of months ago was that you can leverage hash power, you can leverage miners to uh, sort of uh, push the upgrade forward because if a majority of hash power is enforcing the new rules, then the rest of the network can sort of upgrade whenever they feel like it. There's no risk of consensus split in that case. However, with the previous uh, soft fork that Bitcoin has, the soft fork, this is the type of upgrade we're talking about, which is a backwards compatible upgrade. That was SegWit, that was the previous soft fork. Uh, miners were sort of starting to leverage their coordination ability to try to influence protocol development. So this hash power signaling to make sure that the majority of hash power is enforcing the new rules is meant as a coordination mechanism, but miners started to abuse this. Uh, this was ultimately overcome by what is called a UESF, a user activated soft fork, which basically means, well, there's different ways of doing it, but it basically means that users decide on this and this date, we're gonna enforce new rules in one way or another. Um, so at that point, miners that aren't enforcing the rules or that aren't helping coordinate this enforcement of the rules, they're gonna have their blocks rejected. Uh, so that's a strong incentive for miners to actually start coordinating and helping the upgrade happen. Um, did someone want to reserve? No, awesome. I was just going to say, yeah, we're going to, yeah, I think we're going to start with some questions. I'll be kind of filling in and then, uh, you know, obviously opening up to the floor. So if you do have any questions, uh, feel free to raise your hand. We'll call you up. Um, but yeah, I think that was a great overview, Aaron. Uh, I guess I wanted to start maybe with something. Hang on, hang on. Let me, let me oh, finish yeah. real quick. So this is what we did a couple of years ago. Now we're a couple of years later. And this, the past events have sort of spurred the debate again on how to upgrade the Bitcoin protocol. And there were sort of two main camps on this at, at, at a certain point, which is one camp said, okay, 
let's just use the minor signaling mechanism again. And if it works, great. If it doesn't work, we'll have to figure out something else. And then there's another camp that said, okay, we're going to use this minor signaling, but we're already going to embed the new rule that if they don't help, then at some point we're going to mandate this, this signaling. This has now led to two different clients that both each do their own thing. So you've got the Bitcoin core client, which is, which has implemented speedy trial, which is hash power signaling for three months. If after these three months, miners haven't coordinated upgrades, then it's time to reconsider. And then, uh, there's an alternative client, which is called, well, we're going to call it the based client, I guess, which, uh, has a much longer signaling period for 18 months. And then after these 18 months, the activation is going to be enforced. Is, does anyone in the panel agree with everything so far or Michael, do you think that was a fair summary? You've tried to summarize. Sounds good to me. Yeah, I think that was a good summary. Yeah. Richard, did, did you want to go straight to questions or? Yeah, uh, I think we had a question from Paul. Maybe we'll try, Paul, if you want to kick it off and then I'll jump in with some with a couple for me. And then, uh, Paul, did you have something you wanted to ask? Sure. Um, so I've only been uh, superficially following Taproot activation. Um, are you like aware of what um, Luke Dash Jr.'s um, concerns are with the uh, current uh, like rollout? Well, maybe Bitcoin mechanics. Do you want to answer that question? Yeah, so um, Luke's B concerns... Bitcoin mechanic is the lead maintainer. Of, well, maybe you should introduce yourself. Yeah, so I'm I'm the guy that actually released uh, the based client. Um, obviously, Luke Dash Jr. is much more responsible for the code in it. But um, as has been pointed out, most of the code is just, you know, stuff that's been in core for a long time anyway. BIP8 is... It has been in core and reviewed by core anyway. So, um, yeah, uh, I've worked with Luke on this. I've wanted um, this style of uh, activation for a long time. and But my motivations from Luke are slightly different. And um, answering your question, Paul, is a little difficult to do because every time I try and characterize Luke's position with it, I make some sort of technical mistake that he disagrees with flat out and uh, fails to explain to me why exactly I'm wrong. Uh, but I think anyone that's uh, dealt with Luke before can empathize that um, it can be quite difficult uh, understanding him exactly. Um, though I think uh, his main concern is um, the fact that um, he considers BIP8 to have obvious consensus within um, the Bitcoin community. And I share this with him. I don't uh, gauging consensus is obviously a really difficult thing to do, uh, and it doesn't mean, um, you know, uh, unanimousness uh, or unanimity, if I'm using that word right. Uh, consensus just means this is what it looks like everyone wants, which we can all agree Taproot itself has consensus. And as far as I could tell, after the SegWit drama, every Bitcoiner I knew that got their hands dirty wanted to never make that mistake again and go with lot false or BIP9 or MTP even. All of these things seemed like mistakes that we all agreed on. And now that um, Core have gone down the path of uh, trying those things again, but with a slightly different approach of speedy trial where every, the, the timeline is so much sped up that um, we kind of avoid some of the, the delay, uh, it still, in essence, feels like the same approach to me. And um, I think Luke, to, to try and characterize Luke's position again, I think he's um, sort of um, strongly of the opinion, uh, and I don't share this quite uh, to the same extreme extremity as him, he's strongly of the opinion that uh, Core are uh, violating consensus by going with the approach they're taking, not so much with Speedy Trial, but with BIP9 and MTP, and uh, he says um, that if they're going to do this, then uh, they are going against the community, which is inappropriate for Core to do. But uh, I have to caveat all this with um, it's Luke. So I probably am not quite interpreting his position correctly. And uh, I also don't share that position myself. I don't think uh, that um, 
the core are being, uh, you know, they've been accused of being liars or enemies of Bitcoin and all this stuff, not just by Luke, but by others. Uh, I don't share that. I do genuinely think everyone wants to have Taproot activated and we're just disagreeing. Um, but uh, yeah, I hope that answers at least some of your question. I'd also like to make clear that the speedy trial aspect is almost certainly going to be compatible between Bitcoin Core and this alternative release that Bitcoin Mechanics worked on. So, so the, the highly likely scenario is that Taproot activates using speedy trial either on, well, on both Core and this alternative release, and there really shouldn't be any problems. It only gets more complicated if speedy trial fails to activate. I guess I have a question for the floor about speedy trial. Um, you know, obviously, I think Aaron kind of led off with, you know, uh, sort of a more kind of historic look at, you know, how different forks in Bitcoin have activated, uh, whether it's users deciding or miners. I, I guess I'm curious for everybody here. Uh, is speedy trial something unique? Is this is this the first time that we're, we're trying something like this? Is it like other things that we've tried to before? Um, I guess what's the... Uh, Current take on on uh, you know how we got arrived at that idea and then what it says about the process of getting community consensus around a governance up. Well, um, in an attempt to steal man, I would guess um, uh, it's attempting what we tried before in in essence, but with the timeline completely changed. So instead of trying SegWit rollout BIP one forty nine etc where you have a long, long period. If it's obvious that the miners aren't going to activate this thing, you have to wait until timeout before you can try anything else again. Um, speedy trial says, okay, we're going to do that again, but if the miners for some reason are blocking it again, they only have three months before it fails, and then we can try something else. Exactly. So it, it fails fast, but it but there's a delay until it activates. So it succeeds slow, but fails fast, which um, which was designed so that if miners don't signal, we're not waiting for a whole year, but at the same time, we're not rushing activation. So if miners do signal, then we will know when activation will be. It'll be middle of November of this year. Yeah, that's interesting. I guess it's, uh, you know, one of the reasons I was asking that is because, you know, as Aaron sort of framed at the beginning, you know, the question of like whether users or miners should activate it, it also, it, it seems sort of like at points, the, the uh, you know, I guess the contingent uh, that has been pushing more for uh, a UASF has been in favor of uh, the users activating that, but then the speed trial seems to default to the older model of allowing miners to signal. Uh, it's just that the timeline, is that essentially what led to the compromise? And then if I guess if you were someone on this panel who believes that the users should activate, um, why were why was that trade off uh, something you, you were interested in? So, so speedy trial was proposed at a point where I where it was looking likely that there would be two releases, Bitcoin Core would release BIP8 lot equals false, and this alternative release would release BIP8 lot equals true which are compatible until the final two weeks. Um, so that's where we were when the proposal of speedy trial came out. So we, because it had a fail fast dynamic, pretty much everyone was happy to give it a go, right? So we only lose three months if speedy trial doesn't activate. Um, but in terms of like users activating, at no point, we, we were always gonna be user, using minor signaling. The only dispute was on whether users were able to enforce signaling, assuming that miners didn't signal for, say, a year. So we were always using miner signaling. There was no dispute over that. It was just whether there would be forced signaling at the end of the period or not. Yeah, and I would say the difference, is, the difference of opinion was also on whether or not to bake this in or not, where you know, even some of the lot false proponents, you know, they didn't want to exclude the idea of mandatory signaling at some point. They just didn't want to release a client immediately that would bake that in. They wanted to, you know, see what happened. And then if Taproot wouldn't be activated, reconsider, you know, revisit Taproot itself, see if there was maybe some, some problem with it that they hadn't noticed before, ask miners why they didn't activate. While the lot is true side, you know, they were, uh, they, they, figured there's no reason 
that any that miners could possibly reject this or otherwise they should have already told us so let's just bake in the response and yeah go, go for it i think it just comes down to um like if i can speak to my motivation for releasing it because it isn't really the same as luke's um it's not so much a claim of deception or or um you know uh dishonesty or anything like that um uh, it really just comes down to um, what's written on the taproot.works website that um, is a, a part of this release, which is um, who, how do we actually deal with the problem of uh, activating upgrades in the network? Because I think I'm agreeing with Rusty here, which is we, we're just kicking the can down the road for an actual workable way to do this in the future because devs don't want to do it. Devs, it's not appropriate for devs to do it, and there's so much that goes into making it not have the appearance of a dev activated soft fork. So instead, they just sort of push it to miners, and miners are in a position that they just don't belong in. If I can uh, sort of um, refer to an old tweet thread that uh, was written by a guy called Matthew Haywood, who works for Blockstream, back in the Segwit, uh, the Segwit wars or the fork wars. He said he characterized the miners as employees of the network. And he said what they were trying to do as sort of employees or security guards of some sort of office somewhere was saying, we're not going to guard this office anymore. We're not going to we're not going to show up to work here. We're changing the building. We're going to walk over to another building as the security. And uh, if you if you you need to move your office to this building, we're going to guard because that's what we're guarding now. We choose it. And then um, the the network itself, uh, you know, as in the operators of it, would said, well, no, if you don't show up to work, we're just going to hire other people and you won't get paid. And that comes not, it doesn't, I don't mean to have a massive disagreement or like uh, characterize one part of the Bitcoin community or ecosystem rather as natural enemies or anything like that. But I'm just saying they're being put in an inappropriate position. It's not up to the miners to, we shouldn't put them there. They're just employees. It's really, really stupid to put them in a position where they can choose a yes or no for an activation mechanism. So the user activated soft fork, it, it gives the miners nothing more than the ability to make the upgrade happen gracefully and uh, maybe accelerate it if they want. Um, but nothing more than that, because nothing more than that's really appropriate. So for me, it just comes down to user activated soft fork is the right way to approach this sort of thing. And it's in that for that reason, core will never agree on it because they're not just users, they are devs. So it, it, it becomes completely inappropriate. Um, so yeah, that's why, that's why we did it. And sorry if that's a little bit of a tangent there, but, um, yeah. Perhaps let's bring in, perhaps let's bring in Alejandro to get a, a minor mining pool perspective. Yeah, I was just going to ask that because it's my impression that Alessandro, you have been asking around on miners' opinions, and it was my impression that you that was even that was pretty hard. So like miners don't even want Can to be in a position in that position. Is that correct, or? Can we also clarify the difference between forced signaling user because user activated self work has become a very broad term to refer mm -hmm. to the concept of flag days as enforced by some alternative client. And we really need to separate the forced signaling aspect of both BIP 8 lot true, BIP 148, and the current proposed uh, UASF thing that, that Bitcoin Mechanic has been working on, and the concept of a flag day activation itself. Uh, the first one involves miners very heavily, involves uh, kind of forcing miners to signal so as to force the rest of the network to activate some rules, right? The 148 and to some extent this new proposal kind of have a very explicit goal of we, a small subset of users who are going to run this client, are going to tell miners that we're going to basically either, you know, hold the network hostage in some way so that we can force the entire network to have some new rule set uh, that it might otherwise not have had versus, you know, a flag day activation isn't really that goal. Um, and it, it's really an important distinction, right? Because we're talking about 
small minority of users trying to can, trying to kind of force the rest of the network to have some new rule set versus you know something where where it becomes active as a part of users upgrading right um there's a good piece by peter from some number of years ago talking about you know what what does it mean for a fork to be act for a soft fork to be active right and he argues and i think hopefully people would generally agree that you can't call a fork active because miners are enforcing it uh you can't call a fork active because of some signaling threshold the only way you can reasonably rely on a fork and the only way you would really want to store your own money in the some set of rules that's enforced by a soft fork is if you believe that the vast majority of economic nodes are enforcing those rules and so the only reason to do any kind of signaling either in speedy trial or in fact in bip 148 or bip 8 lot true is to force other is to kind of turn other nodes to enforcing those rules right and so it, it's not the case that kind of bip 8 lot true is somehow more or less user activated than a traditional minor signaling threshold um aside from some weird kind of we a small subset of users are going to threaten miners to do this thing it would be you could argue that it is that it is that it is a simple flag day uh, activation is very different in that it is purely just users are going to enforce this rule set right because that that's ultimately the definition of a soft fork being active is that users at the end of the day are enforcing the rule set uh and that they chose to do that because of the rules of the network not somehow they kind of all users are choosing to opt into enforcing these rule sets not this kind of lot true method where you have a very small subset of users trying to force miners to activate a soft fork via some kind of holding hostage thing yeah there's no hostage okay. element here that's a bit uh, a bit of an exaggeration and a mischaracterization of it and to be honest, the, the emphasis on it being a small group over and over again, this can only start as a small group. That's naturally how it will occur. It can't be any other way. Okay. If I can add, elaborate on that, if I Matt. Can, if, I can, if I can add no. something. Uh, no, I, first I'd yes. like to... Matt, can you, uh, thanks for joining, by the way. Can you elaborate why you consider it force or holding hostage or threatening or these kinds of terms? Uh, th this actually wasn't my terminology this was I, I i do forget exactly who mentioned it but one of the proponents of of i believe it was bip 148 actually proposed this right so bip, bip 148 and bip 8 lot true which again are very specific unique types of uasf fork activation they're not kind of they shouldn't be considered the general concept of user activation um because i think that's a bit of a misnomer they the way they work right so they assume that kind of a large number of Bitcoin users and in, in probably in practice, meaning the vast majority of economic nodes are monitoring for minor signaling, right? This would be running BIP 8 lot equals false. Um, in the case of BIP 148, running just the, the SegWit activation rules that were in Bitcoin Core at the time. Um, and then taking some subset of Bitcoin users um, and as Bitcoin mechanic knows, it, it's, it's has to start, it is a small minority and whether it grows into everyone or not is, uh, you know, it had never did with BIP 148 and it, it could, I guess, in theory with some other process, but it hasn't in the past. Um, so take this small minority of users say, we're going to fork ourselves off and have only pay for a coin and only pay miners to mine a coin if those miners are signaling um, and basically say like, we're going to create two coins and we're gonna put our money behind the coin where miners signal and thus activate SegWit for all nodes, i.e. once they signal, they bring all of the other nodes along with them and kind of this, this minority trying to push this fork uh, brings all of the other all of the rest of the network with them 
in activating this fork, right? So it's not kind of this, everyone is signaling, everyone wants this to happen, like, okay, maybe everyone wants this to happen, but certainly um, you're kind of making this threat of, we're going to fork the network, we're going to create two Bitcoins, and either you come along with us and hopefully signal, and then it act this fork activates for everyone, or you don't come along with us and we create two bitcoins and then we figure we let the market figure it out right yeah, at that point sorry. Have to be can i jump in there people Matt, either can buying I, Matt, this Matt, can i jump in there not. because what we're doing is uh, this characterization only makes sense if we're talking about an upgrade that upgrade that there isn't an obvious consensus on with the network the fact that everyone wants taproot means that we're not going to be holding anyone hostage or forcing an upgrade that people don't want because ev- why no, in a situation not. where no ev- because the, it's about the consensus rule right and with BIP 148 and BIP 8 lot true, the consensus rules are actually two forks, right? You have first a flag day fork that forces signaling. And then as a side effect of that, you then have a fork that actually activates taproot. So there's two forks there. It's not just activating taproot and everyone agrees taproot's great and so we're activating taproot. You're also first proposing a flag day soft fork activation that either all miners are signaling or splits the network. I just think, I think in an ideal world, we would get to a point where everyone, where there's as much consensus on an activation mechanism as there is consensus on taproot, but that is just not going to happen. Right? So, I mean, some people, let's, let's assume Speedy's trial fails. Some people will agree with Matt and say we should do a flag day, but there won't be consensus on it. I can absolutely guarantee you. And there won't be, guar- there won't be the same level of consensus on any activation mechanism as there is on Taproot. That has become abundantly <laughs> clear. Can I ask a question about flag day? So sorry, Matt, you were saying, you were calling it sort of a simple flag day. I mean, doesn't a flag day also require like, some use of force or like how does it not? I guess I just don't quite understand that point. Yeah, so I mean, the, the question is, right, so maybe we should go back a little bit. One of the design goals of all recent soft forks, and this includes Taproot, this includes Segwit, this includes a few ones before it, um, has been that a miner who does not deliberately modify their software will not create an invalid block. Um, so if you're a miner today, and we just all agree that tomorrow we're gonna start enforcing Taproot. We're gonna change all of our nodes. It's just gonna start enforcing Taproot as of tomorrow, it's gonna be great. No miner who's running unmodified full node software will actually mine an invalid block because they just won't mine any Taproot transactions, right? So all these transactions that they wouldn't know how to validate these Taproot transactions are today non-standard. And this was true for Segwit, this was true for previous uh, forks. And so they won't kind of automatically by default split the network. Um, So if on the other hand, you have kind of this BIP 148, BIP 8 lot true design, uh, they they do split the network like very clearly, right? So the, the, excuse me, um, the design is we have this flag day and on this flag day, miners have to actively change their software in order for their blocks to not be considered invalid. And thus we're going to kind of ensure that there is a network split uh, one way or another, or miners are like 100% signaling or or whatever the threshold is that's required by by UASF. So so it's different in that sense um, that it kind of doesn't by default split the network. You might have uh, some cases where where it happens and and you can argue about the relative likelihood of uh, cases where kind of it happens accidentally. Um, but it doesn't, it doesn't happen by default. And it also doesn't have this kind of like, yes, at the end of the day, any soft fork that has material kind of debate around activation, ultimately the only resolution is you go to the markets, right? You have two coins and the markets decide which one has more value and probably whichever one has more value, probably well, one's going to have 90% of the value, one's going to have 10% of the value, the one with 90% of the value is going to be Bitcoin. Like that's, that there is no other resolution to soft forks in the face of disagreement aside from that, I think. Um, and and I, I would assume that probably we all kind of sort of agree with that and we just disagree on 
you know, what, what the process should look like to hopefully, you know, to maybe get there. Maybe we should try to get there. You know, I personally think we should try to avoid getting there, but knowing full well that like, if there is material disagreement, we will end up there no matter what we do. Um, but. But in answer to the question, a flag day is just core developers deciding when the flag day should be and miners no abs absolutely not. The, like well then well no, someone has to someone has to put that into the software so like, right where so are you getting the, the consensus the on the flag day yeah michael's the completely model, correct the flag day is dev deciding when the upgrade the tradition so so is bip one so is bip 148 and so is bip 8 lot true right it's just except it's not the other, devs doing it it's case, users it's some, except matt in it's this not case, the it's devs you. doing it in this case it's the users with a grass in this case it's point. user in this case, it's you, right? Like, it's not saying the devs. Devs are users, too. They're just... Yes, you know, but we're some, talking about specific groups, aren't we? We're talking about two different clients here. We're talking about the core client and the base client. Let me ask a real <laughs> quick question. And let, let's say the base client would have deployed a flag day. Would, you, would that be fine, Matt? I think that's likely a lot better, yeah. I think the, you know, the... I mean, A, I think there's there's not a real rush to like jump to do something right now when we have 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 when we're going to see how it works and then if if it doesn't work you know maybe maybe we should all agree on on something to go from there i, I think we should wait to, to see where it goes but in principle like a yes i i've been fairly vocal that i think uh force signaling is, has no material benefit and a lot of a lot of material Disadvantage. I know some people uh, disagree very strongly on that point. Um, I'll but... explain why you're wrong there if you're interested it... in. Let's well, let go. Let's finish go answering this Ale... question, let's... and then we can go there. Maybe. Let's um, let's go I... to Alejandro and the... get a mining tool perspective because yeah, I'd love to hear from just Alejandro. Two or three of us. There's still three of us just talking all the time. Let's uh, get Alejandro's perspective. Okay. All right. That was a uh, that was interesting to hear you guys discuss. Um, I'm not. I'm not. I'm not gonna. Dis I'm not gonna start arguing or or discussing on which which activation method is best. I've sent the activation parameters to all the mining pools in China, um, and it's now up to them to either you know do what they need to do or they don't. So that's all I'm gonna say. That's all I've done, and let's see. I hope they they do what you know. I hope they they get Taproot activated because that's what I want. I think it's a good. It's a positive for Bitcoin. But I'm not going to get into the last thing I want. The last thing the Bitcoin, in my opinion, community wants is some more drama. So I'm just going to send them the, the activation parameters, a speedy trial. Um, the, uh, and that's it. And I'll wait for, see what happens. Did Thanks. you, what is pool, is pool in on board? Do you know what pool in is planning? Have you spoken to? Yes, pool yes, of course, of course. We're working on it. Pool in's working on it right now. So we, I hope to, you know, we're, we, Pulin is, uh, you know, it's a large company, and we have lots of projects going on. So, um, you know, uh, but it's it's a high priority for us. Uh, we're, we're we're working on it right now. Um, Getting... I'm sure, I'm sure F2 pool is probably uh, working on it too. So that means that's a, that's already, you know, around thirty percent of the hash rate um, will be on board with Speedy Trial. Getting back to my uh, previous question basically was that a fair assessment like do you do you have the impression that miners even care to put it bluntly or do they just want to have a solution and whatever care about what exactly about how the upgrade happens specifically um it's hard to say i think um it's hard to say um i, I can't answer for all mining pools there's very there's you know um i speak to them um a lot, but every single mining pool has their own, you know, the thinking. So, yeah. Do they keep up with the debate at all, as far as you can tell, or not really? Yes, 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 yes. The large ones are are, are following everything. Um, I don't know about the smaller ones. The smaller ones are just trying to survive, to be honest with you. But um, the the large mining pools do follow development closely. Uh, and but I just don't, I don't know what exactly what they're thinking. Uh, all I can talk to about all I can speak for is Poolin. Poolin's working on getting it. Uh, I'm working on getting speed trial, speedy trial. Um, 
but and F two pool I think also is uh, is working on it. I mean, we 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 signaled we signaled speed trial on on activation.com. Um, and we were pretty happy when Bitcoin Core um, integrated it. Can I, can, I, can I ask you, Alejandro, um, do yeah. you think there's um, any validity to the idea that um, Schnorr SIGs uh, save a lot of space in the blockchain for more sophisticated stuff and um, therefore miners would actually be incentivized uh, in some sort of, uh, sort of self-interest to not want that upgrade? And maybe be disingenuous about it when they're saying yes, of course we want that upgrade uh, before, uh, or telling Core that when, uh, you know, uh, we're deciding on an activation method that might depend on them. Do you think there's any sort of uh, validity to, you know, if you ask Jihan uh, before we rolled out BIP one forty nine, do you want Segwit? Of course he would have said, yeah, I want Segwit. Please leave that up to me. I'm definitely going to ac activate it, guys. No worries. Like, of course, he would lie about it then. So, uh, of course, I'm not uh, accusing you of being dishonest here, but um, this is maybe a perspective that I find uh, hasn't really been explored or looked into with regard to whether miners are being honest uh, with their intentions before the activation is launched. You see, these these type of questions like that, is, I don't I don't find them very useful. The way I like to, I, I guess it's very personal. The way I the way I do things is. Is if um, if there's an action on on the table, either take it or not. I'm not gonna come here and start discussing about Jihan and Segwit, um, and and how it might apply for for Taproot activate for Taproot right now. It's, I don't I don't find I don't find it fruitful or any point to it. So like I said earlier, I've sent the Taproot uh, information over to the mining pools in China, and it's up to them to 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 upgrade. I'm not gonna tell them anything more. It's not up to me. It's up to them. Um, and if you can, you can, you can, you guys can come and argue about Jihan and Segwit all day, but I, I'm not just gonna, I'm not gonna take part in that. Should we take a question from, does anyone have a question or? I did want to oh. briefly get oh. to uh, Michael, or you, you said something about, or sorry, uh, Bitcoin mechanic, you said something about the concept of uh, Bitcoin Core, including activation parameters, or including, in, in this case, you said specifically a flag day, is, quote, just developers deciding. And I think the, there's a, a weird, a, an issue there that, that's really critical to point out. Um, and that what we're really talking about is we're not talking about kind of, quote, developers. We're talking about filter bubbles. Um, and what you're saying is basically that, you know, the, the Bitcoin developers are in their little filter bubble and that you know, them deciding them, you know, it's, it's obviously a fairly diverse crowd deciding on a, a, a activation parameter to propose to the network in the really, in a release of, of Bitcoin core, which, which of course, Bitcoin developers have never been able to do anything but propose in, in the form of a release, just like you proposed in the form of a release, a, a different activation method. Um, you, but I would say, and I, I think it's really important to note that, that you doing the same thing and you proposing a different activation method with different particular parameters, and in this case, a flag day, um, in your own release is, is the same, is basically the same thing, right? There is a filter, there is absolutely a filter bubble of, of certain subset of the Bitcoin community that's uh, very interested in doing a fork via a, this, this for signaling mechanism. Um, and, and I mean, you, you look at Luke saying that this clearly has consensus, but I mean, I, I would I would argue it, it clearly only has consensus in in his particular yeah, filter so, bubble. Um, and, and yeah, all let me. Bubble. Like, don't get me yeah, wrong. Look. We all are, but I I have a really hard time with you suggesting that it's somehow different. It is not. Okay, well, it's no different up... between Bitcoin Core proposing something and you <clears> proposing <throat> something. It's just people's own view of what consensus is based on their filter bubble. There is there yeah, is a okay. difference, Matt, because because users will blindly run Bitcoin Core as the reference client and the most popular client. To actually run a uh, alternative client is a conscious choice where they're moving away from what they normally do. So that's, that's one big difference. If core was to I... push a flag day, there'd be a lot of core users that would just blindly run core with a flag day in it, and the flag day would likely activate core without any mine or user conscious choice. And that's uh, You know, I mean, that's, that's, that's true to some extent 
Um, I think you don't give enough credit to, you know, the, the real, like the, at the end of the day, what matters is economic nodes and you don't give enough credit to, for example, large exchanges, for example, miners like Alejandro was talking about, for example, uh, you know, some end users, but that's not actually a, a hugely popular use of Bitcoin Core, uh, who, who do actually read what's going on and, and are, you know, maybe they're not super motivated to like take a part in the discussion because, you know, they don't really care the way they, you know, they just kind of want to see it activated. And as long as it's reasonably, as long as it's activated in a somewhat reasonable fashion, they're not going to like try to interject their opinion, uh, but they do care and they do read these things. And they've, uh, you know, so I, that said, I do agree that, you know, we could probably do better. You know, Bitcoin Core has never had an auto update mechanism for this very reason to discourage that kind of just, yeah, I'm just going to follow what Bitcoin Core says around consensus. Um, but, you know, if there's a like massive improvement that could be had that doesn't at the same time risk just splitting the network needlessly, then I think that'd be a, a great direction. Of course. You know, not splitting the network needlessly is a critical uh, goal here too, right? There are competing goals. And one of them is if you start having 20 different activation things and users running different things and everyone just saying like, we're going to run different incompatible consensus rules on the network, all of a sudden it, it's a mess, right? This whole theory of like Bitcoin is this stable currency that people can build a business on and rely on and, and you know, store their life wealth in all of a sudden just like flies out the window so you know you do yeah, have to walk that line a little your, bit your, your, your advocacy what you're doing there is you're advocating essentially what comes down to some sort of centralized planning in order to avoid any split on the network and you're doing it via this trusted thing that everyone is going to run that michael just alluded to which is People just run Bitcoin Core because it's what we're used to. But what you don't allow for in that situation is if Bitcoin Core is doing something that some of the community feels violates consensus. Because we can say for a long time, there isn't necessarily consensus for BIP8 or Lot True, and that's fair enough. I can say that, but I can guarantee that there's no one that has consented that I know personally or that I've ever come across that says, I want BIP9, I want MTP, I want speedy chart. All of these things are people just watching core. And you're talking about filter bubbles. That is the filter bubble, really, that's gone off in its own direction and done its own thing. And I think it's totally violating consensus. And in that situation... Yeah, I mean, then... you're this... Look, I have spoken to a lot of people who think that. And also, you know, I think Michael has done a reasonable job of ensuring that these that the, the meetings that Michael was organizing on IRC, as well as, uh, you know, actively encouraging people from any part of the Bitcoin community to respond on the mailing list. Like these things are open to everyone. And if you're suggesting that like, it's so A, you know, any release of Bitcoin Core is, is just a proposal. Um, and, you know, certainly Alejandro and other mining pools would have to, to work on uh, signaling for this, but also users have to upgrade for something for a soft fork to reasonably can be considered valid. Um, and so this proposal came out of a broad public discussion that anyone can contribute to. And a lot of people did contribute to. I understand that there are pockets of the Bitcoin community where they feel that they, they strongly disagree with this, but like, okay, so, so don't run it and encourage people not to run it, which you're doing and that's great. But at the same time, I, I no, I'm not. Buy I'm not doing either no of those one. things. I'm encouraging people to run BIP, uh, sorry, BIP9 speedy trial. I'm encouraging people to run that if they want Taproot. I'm saying we. Thank you. Dropped off, did you? Okay. Yeah, yeah, I believe he dropped off. I actually have a meeting that so, I have to go to, but there was. There was one thing I just wanted to say that I disagree with Bitcoin Mechanic on, which is I do think there is community consensus around speedy trial, even oh, though no, I do I think it's slightly, in, I do think this BIP9 MTP version of it is slightly inferior, but I don't think the community cares. Sorry, so that's, um, where, I got... that's where I disagree with Bitcoin Mechanic on. Yeah, sorry, I got a phone call there. So my clubhouse cut out. I don't know how long for. Um, Matt, I don't. I, I have to respond to the sort of uh, this the concern you're placing or the concern trolling you're doing about splitting the network and screwing with this, you know, the reputation of this reliable currency and all that stuff. 
that's not squarely on us. It, it can totally happen as well. If Core do something that people don't agree with, and if we have if Speedy Trial fails, and we've made every effort to be compatible with Speedy Trial, despite uh, some very very esoteric concerns of Greg Maxwell. As far as I can tell, in every likely circumstance or every possible circumstance, if Speedy Trial activates, we activate too. There is no split on the network whatsoever. If Speedy Trial doesn't activate, then a, a split becomes possible if Core deliberately and maliciously launch another incompatible upgrade mechanism that doesn't fit with what we've done in our client. And in that for, case, first of all, not on our head. You can't say that like Bitcoin Core must now must now follow. The decisions we've made because like otherwise it'll split. i mean if yes, your concern is, is splitting that, the network like, then you should if your concern is splitting the network then you should because there's nothing official force in signaling it. does inherently risk splitting the network in a very significant way now yes. if you were talking and, about doing and how you decrease day, that risk is by making yourself compatible with it not by fighting it no that, that doesn't materially decrease the risk the the risk is the for signaling itself and the only way to decrease that risk is for miners to signal so that, that's a conversation no, between you and alejandro and other pools not anything to do with bitcoin core no of course the more people that run it the less uh, risk there is of splitting the network that's an established fact it was beyond obvious during bit 148 and segwit so you're suggesting then that the bitcoin core because you've released this client if if the goal is to you know so i mean we're, the, let's be clear we're talking about the instance that, where like, speedy trial about... fails we're talking about a speedy trial fails here which basically none of us expect to happen anyway right so yes yeah. we are and <laughs> but in the case that uh, you know speedy trial fails okay now core you know uh, okay even if core does release a uh fork that or a bit bait lot false uh version that monitor is for signaling and let's say for example some users don't upgrade to it maybe some users don't like the idea of a force signaling flag day like for example me i i think that's that's a needless risk but but some users don't follow that then it still runs a very large risk of, of splitting the network that doesn't really have to do with just something you know bitcoin core proposing some version that also has bit bait bot true that that doesn't necessarily guarantee that we've really materially decreased the risk of splitting the network. Um, I, I don't really understand how, you know, it's kind of up to core to solve that risk. It's, it's, it's not. No, I'm not saying it's up to core to solve it. I'm, I'm just saying you shouldn't come up with, uh, if, if we're in a circumstance where speedy trial has failed, and then I would imagine there'd be a lot of people at that point running the base client. I think if Core then did nothing, that wouldn't really matter. And if they did what you just suggested, that would be okay. But I, my argument was against them do against Core releasing something that was incompatible with uh, what would happen at the you know in the rollout and the well, activation. By period. default, it is incompatible. It's not even like a question of releasing something new that's deliberately incompatible. Like it's already incompatible right like the the if you are a miner and you're just no mining it's not it's the soft fork upgrade it doesn't violate off. backward compatibility if it, if we upgrade but it absolutely absolutely abs 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 don't take active action to <coughs> signal for the fork by and the they wouldn't do the that just like they didn't do that in, with bit 148 they wouldn't do that because they haven't done it in the past we have demonstrable proof from the past we've actually tried this before and we've seen it okay. work bit that's why it's a reasonable is, approach is i know you don't think it works unique situation yes and it was um, basically and... the same situation but done in a much more rushed way in a much more haphazard fashion so the fact that it can work then and we're trying it again now but with a much longer and more relaxed <laughs> rollout gives me more confidence in it not less if, if speedy trial you... fails, if speedy trial fails, and there are there is this alternative client on the network, core essentially has three choices. And obviously, that like core isn't an entity, so there's core contributors and outside contributors in the community will want to say. But essentially, core will have the choice of either releasing nothing, releasing something that is compatible with this alternative release until the force signaling in November 2022 or releasing something that is potentially incompatible before then. And I think Bitcoin so all of the above do not don't, don't, have any yeah. impact on 
for on reducing the risk of splitting the network from miners either deliberately not setting the either deliberately not reconfiguring their pool servers and their systems in order to signal by that date or users not necessarily running that or miners accidentally forgetting you know miners often have relatively complex infrastructure um and it is the case like we've seen cases where for example ant pool had some pool server that wasn't upgraded when the you know 90 percent of their pool servers were upgraded but but they missed one and so that is something that can split the network no, in this context right? so none of create... the things you propose <laughs> that's not anyone's problem except does. one one miner that might forget something no that's it's not everyone's the general problem network unless problem. everyone is running the thing that is enforcing this flag day for signaling right so it, it's it doesn't have so because you still require it's that not, everyone no, it's is not. running this no, flag it's day not. for signaling These are ridiculous. in order to avoid no. splitting Matt, the network. Matt, sorry. Matt, you've got to let other people speak, eh? Matt, Matt, that's not correct. It's not anyone else's problem. It's if one small subset of a mining pool doesn't do because of poor code hygiene or something like that forgets to upgrade, they are not running, they are not adding the risk to people that run unupgraded clients that have gone on to a taproot activated chain just by default. They're not doing that unless that one tiny area of mining pools somehow creates a longer proof of work chain, which is not going to happen. You need greater than 51% of miners to I, somehow I'm not forget. Sorry. Sorry, I'm not suggesting in this context a persistent fork. I'm suggesting instead uh, that re significant reorgs are a harm to a lot of people using Bitcoin regularly, right? A lot of people accept deposits at one, two, or three confirmations. You know, we can say that maybe they shouldn't do that, and they probably shouldn't. But if you have cases where you are designing things that deliberately encourage these, you know, one, two, or three block reorgs on a regular basis, then you are risking it for them, right? And so the only way to de-risk that, if we want to do this kind of force signaling, which, you know, maybe we do, then, then it would be for everyone to be running this client. Because then, of course, if everyone's running this client, they just ignore these, these random reorgs that are invalid to them. Um, so, so this in concern to, to is risk it. We have to have everyone running it. At which point, we might as well just do a flag day. Why do the okay. force signaling? If this concern is valid, then you're not actually assuaging any of that because you're still doing minor activated soft fork with speedy trial. Oh, sorry, I'm not. So, I, I, I in this context, I was discussing, I like you were saying, assuming speedy trial fails, what do we do next? And so, the question in my mind is. You know, I, I think probably we have some agreement that we want to do some kind of flag day UASF thing. Um, I'm arguing that in that context, I think we should absolutely not be doing for signaling. And we should instead be talking about doing a simple flag day. Because I don't think for signaling adds value. And like I was discussing, it adds some risk yeah. of needless I reorg. I really want to debate you on this. Clients. I would love to debate you on that because I completely disagree and I'd love to hear your opinion on it. I think that doing just a flag day without allowing miners to make the upgrade more graceful just introduces needless risk. And you seem to have the opposite perspective that the flag day is somehow safer when I think it's the exact opposite. So I, I think we can certainly. So, uh, you know, AJ has proposed doing... Uh, like 90% of hash power signaling cancels. But, but sorry, we could do, for example, a, uh, a BIP8 block true style thing that just doesn't do the force signaling part, right? Where, so you have signaling for a year and miners can at any point signal and, and activate the fork, but at the end of the year, uh, it, it activates either way without this additional step of forcing signaling prior to that activation. Um, so it, it has the same kind of properties where miners can hopefully uh, do a 51% system and and avoid some of these risks um, by activating early at 90% or 95%, whatever threshold you want. Uh, but you don't get this property of if you fail to reach that threshold at the end of the uh, signaling period or at the end of this year, you immediately create significant risk of, of reorg, specifically because you're if you reach that point, you know that you don't have 90% signaling, and you know that you don't have 90% uh, kind of participating in this. Um, and so you already by default have, you know, 10% hash power, 15% hash power has, is going to create. Can I ask a question? Because right? we know I, that. You, you guys said you were going to be at taking questions.
and I, I, can, I, it's been interesting listening, but I, I, have a, I have a question I want to ask. If we're confronted with the issue that we don't have miners upgrading and yet we still want the upgrade as users, what alternative do we have but to risk a chain, risk a chain split or a reorg split or something else? It's like it just comes, and th this to me is, is where my confusion exists around why people have a problem with the fact that both of these clients exist. Like I, I, I think absolutely, if, S, if speedy trial works, terrific. But for us to know that at the end of the day, if the miners aren't approving it and there's users who want it, we're gonna need, and whether it's the one activation method or the other, they both they, they both have a point in time where if miners aren't mining the right thing, those, their blocks are going to be forked off of the people who are enforcing the flag gate. So I just wonder what's the big deal? We're, we're, we're gonna get there if we get there and we're not gonna get there if we're not gonna get there. So why is there really, why is there a debate is, is almost my question. Like what, why, why, Matt, are you opposed to the existence of something where the users are able to say, I, if speedy trial fails, I'm drawing a line in the sand at some point in the future to say, let's go. So I'll stop asking my question now, but that's, I, I just don't understand what the objective is. So, so I've got to, I've got to go in three minutes, but, but so, so I don't disagree with the concept of uh, certainly, I mean, I've, I've proposed uh, specific designs for um, you doing a UASF in some form, not specifically with force signaling, uh, if miners don't activate, um, and, and in fact, even proposed it prior to doing speedy trial and prior to speedy trial. Um, and I proposed. But Matt, a, Matt, I'm just asking ago, why you. I'm just asking why you why you appear to be objecting to it, and and the answer you're giving so, me is that you so, don't object to it, but you object to this. Mm -hmm. Are you right? I object to the specific. So, so when we're talking about consensus, right? I object. I have, have very strong objections uh, that are technical in nature, like I was just talking about the, the needless risk of, of chain splits. Um, to but the, the chain specific split risk design exists of in both block case. true, not not to the same extent, right? So in the flag day block true and in BIP one forty eight, the flag day isn't just adding additional rules that miners by default will not violate. It is instead adding additional rules which miners by default will violate and that we know for a fact are violating because they haven't been, uh, they haven't reached the signaling threshold yet at that point, right? So so a, if a miner, to, if we were to just do a flag day activation of Taproot tomorrow, by default, no pools would mine an invalid block that would split the chain. They have to take active effort to modify their software to do so. Um, and this is because of the standardness rules in Bitcoin Core that have existed since many, many years ago. Um, you just don't by default mine things that you don't know what they are. And in this case, Taproot is specifically a type of transaction that you don't know what it is. And so this has been an explicit design goal for the last number of soft forks. So Taproot, Segwit, a number of, of soft forks before that, uh, where by default, a, a miner just running a full node will not mine any invalid transactions and accidentally split the chain. They have to take deliberate effort to do so. Can I, can I just ask a question about that for understanding purposes? I, I, I'm only speaking fast because we're at a time. <laughs> we're here, you say you have to leave. So if we do a flag day tomorrow and a bunch of miners haven't upgraded, and so they don't recognize Taproot, but one has upgraded and one mines a Taproot transaction in a block, and then, and, and then, the rest of those miners wouldn't recognize it because they haven't upgraded. So we don't really have Taproot activated unless we have a majority. No, of sorry. So they, right? uh, no, so, so uh, when I say won't recognize it, I mean uh, include it in a block in a mempool, right? So uh, the miners will mine based on any block that includes a Taproot transaction. And, and they will mine on top of an invalid Taproot transaction. But again, a miner has to take a deliberate action to create that invalid block. Um, but miners will, by default, not uh, include taproot transactions in their blocks, even if they will mine on top of other blocks that have taproot transactions in them. Uh, so, so we saw this with Segway, right? So for a while after it activated, uh, some pools wouldn't mine Segwit transactions. Eventually, all pools did mine Segwit transactions. But there was more than sufficient hash, hash power mining Segwit transactions for Segwit transactions to get confirmed in a timely manner. Um, 
and and eventually miners of course did start mining segwit because you block there were, there were a few blocks where you could make something like 10 percent additional revenue and fees uh by mining segwit transactions because by simply ignoring them you you lose out on some fees uh, but i do actually i have a meeting that started a minute ago so i do actually have to run uh, all thank right you thanks guys for your answer man. the conversation thanks for attending Matt. Let me just let me just attempt from... to answer Thomas' question. Well, I th Thomas was talking about um, the difference between a flag day and force signaling, right? So the reason why there's force signaling in BIP8 lot equals true is to indicate to the network that miners have understand that they need to be enforcing the taproot rules and they will be enforcing the taproot rules right with a flag day core can say okay let's on this flag day everyone should be well miners should be enforcing taproot rules but we don't know for sure that they are enforcing taproot rules and so the force signaling is an indication that miners understand that they will be enforcing taproot rules after that force signaling period is finished and that's why people argue for force signaling over a flag day. It gives information that you wouldn't otherwise have that miners are going to be enforcing the taproot rules at the end of that force signaling period. Can I just ask, Michael, you did a, there was a wonderful introduction. And we, we now understand, for those who were at the beginning of the call, why the signaling mechanism was introduced, which I think you just did a great job of reiterating. In hindsight, in hindsight do we think maybe it was, it was a mistake because it creates all this controversy? And, and leads to the, these these debates where ultimately we've got a core developer saying, well, we might as well just have a flag day if if that's going to be the case. Um, and I'm, I'm I'm still not 100% sure just how opposed Matt is to to this and 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 what and kind of what actions he thinks like Bitcoin Mechanics released this thing. It's it's there. <laughs> like, he's, I don't think he's going to take it down. And if he does, it's like a Barbara Streisand effect, right? Like it, so. <laughs> <laughs> so I, and maybe maybe my whole question is moot. Like, what what does it matter if? Well, maybe it matters for the future. Like, should we not be trying to do? Should is the minor signaling something that sounded good in theory, but it's not good in practice because we have BIP eight, BIP nine, lot true, lot false, particular heights, all these other things. I, I think uh, I think uh, everyone uh, still likes minor signaling. Yeah, minor you know, signaling. That, that is still the yeah. safest safest way to upgrade. We're basically discussing what is the best plan B. Right. But let me just let me just explain why. So it's it's generally as as long as as long as miners are going to cooperate and signal, um, then it's actually better to say to miners, okay, you you know that this is community consensus you've supported it yourself we don't actually mind when it activates or we're going to give you time to signal to show that you're ready for the activation like that is a superior to just saying to miners okay we're going to activate on this day we're not going to do any signaling we don't care if you're ready it's happening this at this point right that it's clearly better to, to but, get but miners Matt, to signal yeah, so ready this rather is than I, have I, nothing yeah. I feel bad that Matt had left the room because he was making an argument when he left that he'd prefer not to have uh, mandatory signaling and just a flag day in case speedy trial fails. And I wasn't able to connect why, like speedy trial with signaling followed by activation date without signaling is superior to speedy trial with signaling followed by the Bitcoin mechanic. There's, there's a difference between signaling and force signaling, right? So with signaling, that's minor signaling readiness. Um, and then if it meets a certain threshold, then you know the soft fork will activate. That's like normal signaling. And, and Matt, Matt not like, like has no problem whatsoever Understood. with minor signaling. What Matt has a problem with is force signaling, which is this two week period at the end of say a BIP8 lot equals true, where unless all the miners uh, signal during this period, their blocks aren't accepted by all the no all the nodes running a uh, BIP8 lot equals true. And so Matt's judgment or conclusion there is that that's actually riskier than just having a flag day. There should be no two week period of force signaling. Does yeah. that make sense? I, I, th I do think I, I, I understand the technicality. I, I don't quite understand why it's more or less risky. But so personally, it, it I feels... support, personally, I support BIP8. <laughs> 
and I think force signaling is superior to a flag day for a number of reasons. Um, yeah, I but agree. Matt, Matt does not Matt does not share that view. Uh, his, his view again, I'm, I, it's hard to speak for somebody else, whether that be Luke or Matt or anybody else. But his view is that a flag day would be less risky than having a two week period of force signaling. Uh, I suspect yeah. he'd also say miners could uh, like fake signal. They could signal during that two week period, but not actually enforce the rules after that two week period. Yeah, um, I'm a little spooked by speedy yeah. trial that like it we can say, oh, it's going to get activated in November by now, but it goes so long without activating that what if people have a change of heart? Like, what if some miners have a change of heart between signaling for activation and the actual activation date? I know these well, are yeah, all and that's, cases. Yeah, I mean, there's always going to be risks for the soft walk. And, and, and I think, um, yeah, and I think, I think someone like Matt is very uncomfortable with some of these risks. But like, if you're going to do the soft walk, you just there are going to be some risks and it's just a case of minimizing them and trying to get as much information uh, and um, indications of what of what miners are actually enforcing and what you what rules users are enforcing on the network but there's 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 going to be risks like it, there aren't as many risks as there would be if you had a hard fork and everyone had to upgrade at a certain point but there are still risks and you just can't avoid it. yeah and I, I listen, I, and from my point of view, I actually view this whole debate as really healthy. To me, this is this is how decentralization works. Different people have different ideas. Everyone seems to have a different idea here, but we all have the same incentive, which is to not fork the chain. And so, like, I, I'm confident it'll actually all sort itself out. Yes, I'm not after confident. we fight. First, let's fight. No, no, no fight. I mean, just let's all, let's all speak our minds, right? And I think that's what. Yeah, like for me, it's just an obvious. Uh, it's like it's um, it's such an obvious approach to take because it's one we've taken before and one that worked. And annoyingly, Matt has left. But frankly, I wanted to ask him why you would take issue with doing the approach that we've done before successfully in in order to advocate for ones that haven't been tried yet, because. That's an, like that's a, that doesn't seem to be a sensible way to go about things. But I've listened to his talks. I know that he has uh, he takes issue with the perspective that bit 148 is what got us Segwit. When I think that's well, sadly he's left, so I can't challenge him on that anymore. But right. I that's think that why was gonna be, that was going to be my next question. Was I? I think like one of the underlying things that I'm kind of unclear about is what the consensus is in core about. What happened with SegWit and, and how that exactly up, uh, upgraded? Um, well, I definitely. Yeah. Frankly, like in within Core, like all the people that have been incredibly angry with us and accusing us of lying, and I mean, I don't, I don't, I really want to come on here and uh, debate positively and uh, explain why I've done what I've done. But since I released this client, I've had nothing but uh, like the same sort of group of ten people within Bitcoin Core, just uh, absolutely like demand to know my identity. Um, you know, uh, which is not a secret, by the way, but uh, also just uh, say we're trying to be deceptive with the name of the client. And th there's a lot of uh, accusations. And uh, also just I've Matt it, it, within minutes of me posting it said, that, you know, don't run clients like this. This is how you get coins stolen and things like that. And this is all really, really um, quite uh, insulting. We're not trying to do anything like that. It's open source, for God's sake. There's not there's no secret coin stealing inside our client and compile it yourself. But the point is, um, to what you just alluded to there, when we did the BIP 148 SegWit upgrades, oh, sorry, the um, the BIP 148, um, you know, forced activation, uh, you know, forcing the miners to signal, otherwise we would reject their blocks. When we did that, we, uh, we met exactly the same resistance. Greg Maxwell was in incredibly against it. Um, the only people that supported it were the same people like Luke Jr. I think Peter Todd was uh, sort of on the fence with that one, but the core devs generally didn't support it. And I think that's, we're just in exactly the same situation. Again, it's the users that got SegWit. It's not the devs. It's the devs that wrote SegWit and launched a failing activation mechanism that they're basically repeating with speedy trial. And to take it to a more diplomatic and neutral perspective, 
that that's not something I want to criticize anyone for, even though I've been put in a position where I have to be quite defensive of what we've done. It's just inappropriate for miners and inappropriate for devs to launch things like flag days or, you know, miners be put in a position where they have the yes or no button. It just makes so much more sense for user activated soft fork clients to come out, which say, we're going to use miner activation as a signaling method. We will reject blocks if that if you don't use it eventually, but we want the grace that comes with having a miner activated soft fork because you know miners mine blocks that's how we all reconvene and uh, decide on a con have consensus on what the perfect state of the bitcoin network is that happens once every 10 minutes on average we can use that to really really smoothly launch an activation but we're not going to add in the option for that to be optional we're just going to say do it at any point you want if it reaches over 90 percent in anything that's fine but the actual forceful element of this can only really logically come from the users and my real point is it just, it has in the past it was successful there's no reason not to do it again and I don't really hear much alternative apart from, well, if speedy trial fails, we can maybe try something else. But I think you're not really going to escape the fundamental problem, which is devs don't want to put stuff in that uh, Bitcoin Core don't want to be putting something in that has no option of failure because once people run it, it has to happen. So it's always going to be a, a slightly more passive approach that well, is going to lead to more ambiguity. I mean, I think that he's also taking some issue or, you know, I don't know, this is what I guess my impression is, is just that, you know, who gets to claim that they're doing something on behalf of the users, you know, right? You're a developer, right? The the code that was developed was developed by someone, right? So I think also, I think maybe that's what he was saying about Flag Day, whereas at a certain point, like, how can the users actually, how can you, how can a user take any action without becoming a developer? Yeah, I, 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 don't, I don't know how you I understand that exactly and I empathize, but I mean, the reality here is, if, if I want to launch an upgrade that isn't Taproot, it's something else that uh, does, obviously doesn't have any kind of consensus or is actually actively really disagreed with. Like, let's take a, a more controversial example, like confidential transactions, right? That's, that's an upgrade that some people obviously want and some people really, really don't want. And it's quite nuanced, uh, understanding the difference between them. So that's a different situation like if i if i have my own client that says i'm going to reject blocks that don't signal for activation of this at some point then the fact is i then the risk is more my own it's not the networks in general the only reason taproot becomes a general risk to everyone else and not me is because i know everyone else wants taproot so if i run a client and a few other people run a client that say we're going to get taproot it has a compounding effect just like segwit did where you just end up with segwit However, that's only because everyone wanted Segwit except Jihan and everyone wanted uh, everyone wants Taproot. As far as I can tell, literally everyone wants Taproot. I don't see any objection to that whatsoever. So if there's a, con a, con a contentious uh, proposal out there and people are running clients for that, then they have to be ignored and they will be ignored. And but that would be and if they weren't, then that's just basically a failure of Bitcoin because anyone can run a custom client at any point in Bitcoin and soft forks do have the soft forks do eat the dominant chain if they ever gain more proof of work in accumulation so that's a constant risk that we run but when it's it's justified in certain circumstances like the one we're in right now because everyone wants taproot it would be it's a scary thought that someone could run a user activated soft fork client like ours with a with a controversial upgrade that is scary but that's not what's happening here and i don't think we're making it more likely to happen in the future by doing what we're doing let me attempt to try and put the, so I, I don't, you, you, uh, Bitcoin Mechanic, you talked about some of the core developers being very anti this release. So let me try and put what I think their perspective is. And again, it's hard to speak on behalf of core or any particular individual without them being here. But if you've contributed to Bitcoin Core for a number of years, it's been a huge challenge to keep nodes on the network in consensus. It's hard enough keeping uh, core nodes on the networking consensus when people are running different core versions and certainly a number of people really dislike the idea of lots of different alternative implementations popping up right it's just it's much easier well I mean it's hard but at least it's more doable to try and keep nodes on the network in consensus if everyone's running Bitcoin core so I do think it was a massive shock to the system like with SegWit and with UASF in 2017 where it's like Oh, potentially, and this is arguable, potentially 
a implementation other than core ended up activating SegWit. We, that, that some people would agree with that, some people wouldn't. But that is a big shock to the system when you're used to one project pushing out uh, soft fork activation mechanisms, them all activating fine, no problems. And then we had the uh, like absolute chaos of SegWit. And some people are to adjust to this potential new world where either there's an alternative implementation that runs in, uh, in uh, in parallel with core during these activation deployments, or perhaps even in the future, core never actually releases any activations. But it isn't that would be world. my preference. And I, think, and I think a lot of people uh, are uncomfortable adjusting to this new world. Well, I, I would push back on that a little bit. I think Aaron may software can big and just kind of. How did that go? Um, and it didn't seem like that went any more or less smoothly than, than SegWit. Like, I, 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 there wasn't that was run, but I mean, there was certainly a lot of disagreement at that time. It doesn't really feel like there's a perfect oh, model. But, that, but that's, on, that's on what's actually, I mean, it, Matt's correct in saying both the, the, the soft walk and the activation is both consensus code, but I do think it's illustrative or um, it's useful to separate the two. There can be arguments or discussion on what should be in the soft fork. And in this case, there have been those discussions and we're all, there's overwhelming consensus that the taproot soft fork is absolutely fine. Um, but that's different having discussions on what should be in the soft fork to what activation mechanism is used to activate that soft fork. And I think in, in history, like uh, Aaron can correct me if wrong if I'm wrong, that, but the discussions were on what should be in the soft fork rather than all this controversy and all these discussions and arguments over how to actually activate what's in that soft fork. Uh, yeah, I think that's mostly right. I'm trying to remember, was there any uh, debate on the activation itself, Pete, in the P2SH case? I think it was a little bit maybe. Well, right? there was a debate about the miners being, you know, they were being asked to signal and they didn't oh, understand yeah, sure. why. <laughs> so, like, you know, the, one of the incidents, I guess, in that piece is that, you know, Gavin and Luke are essentially lobbying to the different miners, um, you know, trying to get them to activate or, uh, you know, to, to enact this thing. Decision between which of their versions was, was the better version. Uh, and the miners, in this case, there was this one miner named Tycho who just sort of objects to the whole idea of like him being asked in the first place. So I, I don't know, I feel like amongst the mining community, I guess if you were to even think about that on a smaller scale, they still were sort of unclear why they were being put in that role or, uh, you know, I don't know, it was still this, this sort of a central question, it seems, of, you know, should miners, even though it's safer, play any role in kind of deciding for anyone? Um, you know, ultimately they did do that, but there was, uh, some contingency that you know was confused and or uh, didn't quite understand why we would desire such a system. Yeah, I think that's that's sort of how I see it. Sort of the the P two S H soft fork. That's where minor signaling was sort of invented, and that had its own issues already. With like Pete said, at least one miner sort of not accepting that kind of role. And then with Segwit, the signaling solution was turned out to be a problem so now we're at taproot and now so this is sort of the third step in the evolution of how do we actually do this stuff yeah i think it's such a good uh, i think it's a good uh, precedent to set what we're doing i think um uh and it has the segwit precedent too i just think um merge the merge the code get the code into the uh get the logic into the code base uh but don't be responsible for the upgrade because it is too contentious and you can't really stop UASF movements and rely on them to be the way to get these things in in the future. I think it's it's a sensible division of responsibility in the Bitcoin ecosystem too. It doesn't put miners in an uncomfortable position and it doesn't put devs in an uncomfortable position because neither of them really want it as far as I can see, but users really do. Like I see so many users on on Twitter with like BIP8, BIP8, let's go, lot true, let's go. Like I've, I've just seen it all over the place. They, they want the role. They want to take the activation method and into their own hands. And they can't do it until the actual activation, or sorry, the logic of the upgrade is in the code base in the first place. So that's, a, to me, it's just a, a sensible division of labor. It is a challenge though, Bitcoin Mechanic, if 
if core doesn't release any activation code, you're, you, you effectively need like the miners and the mining pools to be running this alternative activation release. And I, I don't think, as far as I know, that didn't happen with SegWit, and that's unlikely to happen this time unless uh, unless speedy trial fails and but we get to like the full signaling at the end of November to 2022. But SegWit had negative uh, effects on the miners directly, right? And from my understanding, most of the mining community, at least myself, are supporting this type of utility coming to Bitcoin. Well, yeah. maybe. There was some speculation. Alessandro, you want to answer? Yeah, yeah. So the mining, the mining community is, in, in um, the majority is happy with Taproot, um, and yeah, Speedy Trial. I, I feel Speedy Trial will be, uh, <clears throat> Taproot will be upgraded with Speedy Trial, with no problem to the mining pools. Um, it's just a matter of time. Yeah, I, Michael did raise an interesting point, which I want to ask Bitcoin Mechanic about. So yeah, there was a difference in the, and this is also something Matt brought up. So in the case of the SegWit activation, um, yeah, SegWit activated because, at least in part because Bitcoin Core was running what is essentially a lot is false. So they were still, you know, monitoring hash power signaling and activated SegWit when that signaling threshold was met. So then the BIP148 client came along and it sort of triggered activation for all Bitcoin Core nodes. Now it seems like in this case that might not be what is going to happen. It might be that Bitcoin Core is just going to release nothing, for example. So in that case, there's nothing to actually trigger. Do you think that's going to make things more difficult, more risky, uh, impossible even? Probably not. But what, what's your perspective on that? Well, I mean, just very, just very quickly. That's only if Speedy Trial fails to activate. Right, we're talking about sure, yes, yes, yes. where Speedy Trial has failed to activate, and potentially there's only this alternative client on the network with activation code, and cause deciding whether to release activation code or not. Yeah, exactly. So, I mean, this uh, this might sound a, a little um, like a I don't know what the, a, li a bit dangerous and a bit unsettling to some people. Um, but I think there is something more important than stability and ossification within Bitcoin, which is the ability to have upgrades should we need them. And in a, and you're right, Aaron, exactly, in that Core already had uh, what they had for SegWit, and we could we could force the, what people just running vanilla Core nodes to be fine with SegWit by running this additional client in the background that would force clients, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. And if Speedy Trial fails, we don't have that. But in that instance, it comes down to a situation where I personally have have been in a situation before where I thought Bitcoin was finished and it, it was going to die with um, various, you know, uh, hostile attacks from, you know, the New York agreement, things like that. But in those situations, I personally would just say, I don't care if it dies. This is what Bitcoin is to me. If it doesn't live like I want it to live, then it's it's finished and done rather than sort of saying, OK, well, we just can't have Taproot then or OK, well, you know, I mean, there was Bitfinex setting up the futures market for Segwit 2x. I really thought we were done, but I put my money where my mouth was anyway. And I'm just saying that's my own personal approach. And again, I'm justifying why I'm taking the approach I'm taking. And so how that pertains to what we're talking about here is if we're in a situation where speedy trial has actually failed and core will, uh, if, if our client starts getting adopted by a fair amount of the community and miners go along with it and they activate taproot, but core doesn't understand that anymore because we're outside of the speedy trial window, then we're in a situation where I think the right thing needs to happen, which is for core to understand this is what the community wants. They've gone with an, a, a, an, an independent client that is a, an activation method that apparently we decided didn't have consensus, but seems to have consensus. And it's not too controversial for us to release a compatible upgrade or activation mechanism within the core uh, client itself. I think that would be totally reasonable for core to do. And I don't think, I think it's, um, I think it's risky. I do understand it's risky, but at the same time, I think it's the right thing to do 
and I think it should be done. And if if it's the sort of thing that I don't think there's a better mechanism in place than just running that risk, frankly. But I think Aaron's question specifically, Bitcoin mechanic, was that the speedy trial fails and Bitcoin Core doesn't release anything. Um, either either miners are going to have to run your release, or they're going to have to signal. Sorry, Alejandro. Alejandro, I think your mic is off. Oh, sorry. <laughs> I hope you're doing dishes over there. I'm cooking. Could you finish what you were saying? <laughs> Could you finish what you were saying, Michael? Sorry. Uh, yes. Quite... So if if Speedy Trial fails to activate and Core isn't able or chooses not to release anything, then for it to activate before November 2022 with the full signaling, either miners and mining pools are going to have to run your software or they're going to have to signal, like tweak uh, the signaling independently without running the Bitcoin Core release. Yeah, I'm absolutely fine with that. I think in that case, Core would have failed. And as a bit as one of the elements of anti fragility in the Bitcoin space is you can't just depend on the process of one particular uh, client or collection of loose collection of developers or whatever. And I'm not, I'm saying I'm not saying Core have been unreliable or that they failed. I'm just saying in this instance, it doesn't make sense for us to cling to it and say if it's not core, Bitcoin's dead effectively, or we can't have upgrades unless core sanction them because that is an area that's a central point of failure, right? And the whole point of Bitcoin is to is to root around those if they don't work out, and that's exactly what would be happening there. It's like so we can't get Taproot activated. Core's process for agreeing on how to launch activation method mechanisms into the network seems to be broken because the few things we tried it with Segway, it didn't work, and the community came to rescue us last minute and we tried it with speedy trial and that didn't work so um now there's something else that we're not we're no longer compatible with that's running live on the network that's going to get taproot and we're incompatible with it and that's just the network in my opinion rooting around uh, a, a broken or damaged part of the ecosystem and it's a nice thing to see and it's reminiscent of all these you know brandon quittum fungal style analogies where he's talking about mycelium and all that to me that feels good and healthy and and, you know, like the old adage, the Internet treats censorship as resistant and roots around it. Like, I think if core becomes broken to that extent where they really can't release something compatible with our client and, you know, miners would then have to run our client instead. I think that's OK. I, I don't I don't see that as being a problem. Then there would just be enough people would rationally just change their opinion and go, well, look. In, like even people that hate the client, like you know Greg Maxwell and Matt Carello, would just actually look at it and go, "Okay, you have a bug here. If there's a bug, like people care about Bitcoin, people are going to look at it and review the code. They're not currently doing that because they don't think it's necessary, and they're probably right. And we can probably get away with it just because there's so little code in this independent release. But in that in that circumstance, that by the way, for everyone listening, I think. The chances of speedy trial failing are basically zero anyway, so these are all just edge cases, but it's nice to talk about because we really do want to understand how to go about doing soft fork upgrades in the long term and you know after Taproot because there are more upgrades that Bitcoin needs for sure, everyone agrees on that, and we still haven't really figured out a process for it. So yeah, to to answer that question, I think it's it would be okay. I think it might be worrying for a little while, but I think de developers would just move away from core and just go okay well let's review this client that's what everyone's running now and if we want bitcoin to not have some fatal bug in it i better review this code yeah i, I so, agree with most of that i wouldn't use the word broken i think i think core has to be conservative and it has to avoid contentious decisions um and it is it is easier for an alternative release without that uh, millstone around their neck to get something out well, let me ask a question, you know, I don't know, again, unfortunately, Matt is gone, but what would be the argument for Core to not release a lot is false client in that case? Is, does anyone have... Uh, there would be why, one. Why wouldn't they do that? Well, the, 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 the obvious answer to that is if miners don't activate during speedy trial because we find something wrong with Taproot or there suddenly becomes a clear you know, a, a clear understanding that there's, we can either do this a much better way, or there's just a, a total bug in the way the whole thing has been written. Um, then miners obviously wouldn't activate in speedy trial. And if people were still running our client, they would be doing it to the harm of the network in general. And we'd want to make sure that 
can you please stop running at the client I released? Can I? Can you please stop running it? And Core would obviously not want to be compatible then. Other than that, I really can't see a circumstance where Speedy Travel fails, our client's live, it's getting a lot more adoption because it's the only way to get Taproot at that point. And I can see, uh, to me, I don't, I just generally think there would be a lot of disagreement and a lot of people saying this sets negative precedent if we bow to this independent client. But I generally think those people would be on the wrong side of just the general Bitcoin ethos. You can't sit there and say, this isn't the official client, therefore we can't cave to it or anything like that. That would just be posturing and basically just the maintenance of something that would appear more and more centralized as regard to a development process. So I don't think that it could be legitimately argued against. But again, I'm on the other side and Matt's left. So it's hard to really steel man it. I don't think I can steel man it better than you know, there's just a bug in Taproot and we need to not have it. So, of course, we're not going to be compatible with this uh, independent. Well, I I wouldn't mind giving some perspective. Just I've been listening for a while and I'm not super technical and I just, you know, I don't have deep knowledge on whether or not there's possibility of bugs or anything like that. But just as an observer and a participant and consensus, like through Twitter, <laughs> like the uh, the hive mind consensus ideas, it doesn't feel like there's a need, an immediate need for moving fast on this because there is consensus amongst users, developers, and miners to activate Taproot. And there's, yeah, it feels like it should be here already. It does feel like it should be here already. But it's, it's like everybody has PTSD from before and nobody wants to be defining Bitcoin's consensus rules to pretend like to, to allow the government at some point in the future, if they turn against Bitcoin to point and say, you activated Taproot. So start filtering out all these OFAC transactions and all this stuff. So it, it doesn't feel like there's any, anything else than conservatism kind of like driving this. Everybody yeah, but, wants well, it. Question, it's just, it's just my question to, is about a lot of get, goals. It's just hard to get consensus, Brad. And we try and do everything with overwhelming consensus. We have overwhelming consensus on the soft fork. Yeah, but, but the, and there's also there's also doesn't disagree. seem to be there doesn't seem to be any consensus that I can see or feel because there's no risk, there's no attack happening. Yeah. So there's no there's no there's no consensus by well, by regular always, users. There's always to, risk to, with, with soft forks. With last time though, like there was there was consensus. a large pushback in the community, right? Like there was a lot of marketing like, as a miner vote against segwit all this stuff i'm not seeing any of that i've only heard maybe a small percentage of miners speak out against it the vast majority seem to be ready to do the but it's i'm talking the... about actually i'm talking about like users wanting to do the user activated soft fork like like they did with bip 148 users there was groundswell for users because there was a an existential threat to bitcoin at that time by corporations and miners. Now it's just a bunch of nerds arguing how to activate the taproot thing. It's not right. like an existential the, threat. So people are less likely to jump on the bandwagon of speedy trial or whatever this this new client that was released. That's just right, the way it but feels the, to me. The problem, the problem with 2017 was that the USF is really rushed. So this time there's it's, it's really, really well planned. If there are any problems, there's potentially some force signaling in November 2022. But there's, it's just no, it's not rushed in any way, shape, or form like it is in 2020. It but it feels it's like it's trying to be rushed. It, it, it like what? It's not, well, it's, it's not. It, what I mean, a Bitcoin November, mechanic is talking about though November, is like they've, got, they've got this client that they're trying to get support for, and me as someone who participated in the kind of idea of user activated soft work and in 2017 and no 2x and stuff like that i don't feel the need to support that like client i just don't feel the need yeah. to even get involved it, well, I if I can to. yeah if i can because, because that's, like you can, that's a you very, can wait until sorry. after speedy trials fails you can wait until exactly. next year you can wait till june 2022 whatever but it's there if you need it and you want to run it that's the point yeah if speedy trial activates then it's not needed but if speedy trial doesn't then it potentially is I'm also going to have to leave. I'm just going to quickly answer Aaron's question, then I'm going to leave. So uh, apologies. Um, so Aaron said, what should Core do if Speedy Trial fails and there's a uh, 
there's a alternative release on the network, right? I, I agree with Aaron that I think if it was up to me, Bitcoin Core would release a BIP8 lot equals false that doesn't have the false si false signaling at the end because that would give miners the ability to signal and activate Taproot for another potential well, another year after Speedy Trial has failed. And there'd only be four signaling on the alternative client in November 2022. That's what I would do. Obviously, I have close to zero sway on what Core does, but that's what I'd do if, if I made the decision. Uh, I think it's going to be very controversial. Yeah, my question Core. is, what, what yeah. is actually the argument against that? The argument against that, I think, would be why should Core uh, follow what an alternative release has decided? Why should Core follow the parameters that have been set in an alternative release when uh, like all core contributors haven't signed off on those parameters or the code that's in on that alternative release. And you could have well, a problem, you could have a problem in the future where like a bunch of like, I think you've used the word cowboys on your podcast where a bunch of cowboys just jump on a soft fork, like starting for like start telling the community when, what parameters should be and when things should activate. And like Core or anybody wouldn't want to just follow the, those cowboys. I'm not saying that Bitcoin Mechanics a cowboy. I'm not saying Luke Dash is a cowboy. But that's potentially the wiring precedent that's set. If like you just have to follow whatever the cowboys do because they're first out the gate. Yeah, understood. I think there's um, uh, I, a lot of the parameters we've got set here are basically being taken from Core in the first place, right? This is one of the original proposals that was in Core. It's it's very un cowboy like. I mean, it's this is all gray though, isn't it? So it's uh, obviously it would be nice to set precedent with all of what we're doing here, and it's really hard to do with stuff that isn't black or white. But like what would the parameters? We, as you were encouraging at the time of developing the independent release, Michael, you, you encouraged us to be as compatible with Core as possible. So if Core then have to come around and release after us because of speedy trial failing, they're going to be compatible to the, to basically, uh, to the most extent, with parameters already proposed within Core that basically everyone was fine with anyway. It's just that really it comes down to lot true and lot false and... You know, with the BIP8, BIP9 thing isn't really so much, it isn't really relevant so much. It's just the lock-in on timeout. And the, as far as all the other parameters go, like the, the block heights and all those things, those are basically, they come from core in the first place. This is this is like rogue core. It's like a rebel element of core. It's not just a completely independent thing. And by that logic, it should be much easier for people to tolerate, you know, being compatible. Yeah, the only, the only the only problem is if, like Matt said, he didn't like the force signaling. So if if like there, I mean, I don't think there will be. But Would let's you think, there's, let's, Michael? Let's assume there's a scenario where there's overwhelming consensus in core that there shouldn't be force signaling and they should do a flag day. A flag day would not be compatible with this alternative release. I don't think it's going to come to that because there's going to be huge contention if Core decides to release something incompatible with this alternative release. Yeah, like but I have is, to say, it's at in least that, theoretically possible. In that circumstance, if Core were to actually go with that, I think that would be acceptable if maybe in a circumstance where there really was a true cowboy release and what they were doing with this independent client was totally not not mirroring any of the parameters set or the general approach taken by Core in the first place. If they were to come along and sort of crassly go, all right, here's a brand new thing. It's a flag day. We la la la. We can't hear. Uh, there's no other activation <laughs> that's live on the network. Like that doesn't exist. If they do that, then th I can tell you they're not going to do that unless they actively want to sabotage Bitcoin. And I don't think they do. I think that's you know I'm not gonna I'm not gonna project negative intentions onto them in that way. They just won't do it because there's a live thing. Like you've already got you know. Uh, Rodolfo, you know, the manufacturer of cold card and all that running the independent client. Like if you if core are going to start a contention with people like within prominent people in the Bitcoin community that have already decided they like an activation method that's already live, then that that would be core sort of I think a lot of people would go, okay, well I just can't use this client anymore. And I don't think I don't think we want to go down that path. And I don't think they would. I think you know, it's a collaborative and open process. I think there'd be far too many people in core knacking everything, saying, look, there's already an activation thing live on the network. Why are we launching something that's incompatible when we basically all agreed with the parameters of the independent client in the first place? Indeed, they come from.
Yeah, I agree. I'm just I'm just trying to give some reasons to Aaron why Core might consider not releasing something compatible. Uh, but I, I agree, I think, with pretty much with all you've, what you've just said, Bitcoin Mechanic. Okay, I need to go, but thanks a lot for organising this. And thanks for everyone's hard work on Tabrak. Thank you, Michael. Thank you, Michael. Swimmingly and Much it love. activates during speedy trial and all of this discussion is just hot air. But thanks, everyone. Thanks, Michael. Yeah. Thanks, Michael. Bye-bye. Does anyone else have a question? Um, what's the downside of core giving users a configuration option on whether to make the decision on a per node basis? Yeah, I wanted to add that uh, just to what Michael said there, because he said uh, in if speedy trial, are you talking about in the instance where speedy trial fails or just generally in this uh, in generally in their activation proposal rather than speedy trial? Well, specifically for speedy trial in this case, but the general question also applies. Um, in speedy trial, um... Uh, I'm not I'm not in, sorry I'm still not entirely sure what the question is um if so the question if, is I think why not release uh, a lot is false client that users can manually configure to become a lot is true client is that it, right correct. in what circumstance though in uh, whenever, you know, after whenever speedy they trial? want oh the con yeah the configurable option I don't know why that didn't get included uh, that seemed I don't know why, frankly. Um, I can't answer to that because I'm not uh, really involved in the core development process at all. It's something I would have liked, and if if it was there, um, it would certainly negate the need for the for the based independent release client. Right, right. Uh, I think yeah, the answer yeah. is, as far as you know, I can still manage it. Is that um, it would mean that Bitcoin Core is basically releasing a client that could potentially become incompatible with itself, and the, the you know core developers try really hard to keep the network in consensus, and so an option like that doesn't really yeah it sit adds well lot, with that mission. Great point, great point, Aaron. It adds a lot of uncertainty and a lot of unknowns that uh, it would be better not to have. Uh, personally, I don't think it's a bad idea. By the way, so I'm, you know, I'm, I'm still manning an argument that I actually agree that that would be a very interesting solution to this problem. But uh, right. there, I, I there think could... that would be the argument against it. Right. I mean, I understand the argument against it, and for that reason, maybe there could be a time limit for that option, and then, you know, uh, the, you have to upgrade to the next client. Sorry, what do you mean? I'm not sure. Meaning, I meaning this last there is suggest. a there is a time limit up to which that applies, and after that, you user cannot do that anymore, and they have to upgrade to the next release. Uh, what problem does this solve? Uh, a permanent, uh, uh, you know, loss of consent. Mm, I'm not sure. I'm following. I, I think the uh, one of the benefits of using this solution is that you need a shelling point for when to start, you know, enforcing the UASF basically. And by releasing a lot is false client with a lot is false option, you know, the shelling point part is completely solved. But I'm not, that, I'm not sure if that answers your question because I'm not entirely sure what your question is. Well, my question is that there is a period of uncertainty, right? But at some point the dust is gonna settle and uh, there is gonna be a decision one way or the other and then uh, that option that the user can configure stops working. So the user gets a certain period of time to express their opinion uh, and help make the decision. Can uh, I'm not sure that sort, of, that sort of solutions really work because in the end it is free software and anyone can deploy and change and run anything they want. So I also don't think this is the right approach for Core to take. So I don't really need to steal man the other side because I don't really think... I, I like it, but the more I think about it, I stop to like it because it's, I mean, that is essentially what we have now, which is two different releases, one with lot true and lot false. We kind of have that now, even though, you know, core isn't simply lot false. It's, uh, you know, it's speedy trial as well. So it fails faster. But, you know, I don't, if for core to release something like that, it it makes, it doesn't make a lot of sense because, within themselves they're just going to argue that you know we have 
we haven't really committed to either side, which is a complete fail. All we've done is introduce all this uh, ambiguity, which is, you know, some people are going to run. Basically, you can say, look, if we release this thing, everyone's just going to run lot true anyway. So it's my, it's like we're just releasing lot true. And anyone that runs lot false is just adding risk to the situation. So if we're going to release the option of lot true, we should just release lot true because that's actually safer. But adding lot false into the mix just adds and uh, adds confusion and makes things potentially worse. So I don't think it would be a good idea. And given that that, that is right. true, the, the only argument in favor is it. you're right, I agree with that. The argument in favor of it is that it would still require an active user action. It would still require users to actually do something to switch a configuration switch. And therefore it's, it, it does take away a little bit from the developers control the protocol rules perception. Yeah. So yeah. I'm, I agree. And, uh, I, there's that even that comes down to a big point of contention with ax and nax like a lot of people are saying no uh it can be okay but you have to default it to off or uh can it be within the bitcoin conf or do you have to go deeper into the code and recompile it yourself and flip the switch like every one of these questions has so much disagreement around it that it just becomes impossible for core to do it and that's why core always end up releasing these non-committal clients with lot false and because they just they can't do anything that's more active than that because it's just not appropriate for the, i mean I've, i'm repeating myself here but uh it just you end up in an area and territory where core devs are just not particularly comfortable and quite rightly and that's why i'm doing what i'm doing i just wish they wouldn't attack this client so much because it it really just lets them off the hook rather than comes as an attack with them and that's why it's completely compatible there's a reason that if speedy trial activates we activate too and one thing that hasn't really been appreciated as well is that it's not really that much i can credit uh, i can't really take much credit for this at all but there is the slight added incentive now for miners to activate because they know there's a lot true client out there in the first place so any resistance that they might have to activating uh, is more futile in the long run, so they might as well just cause less disruption to the network by activating during speedy trial. So if speedy trial does work, this client that we've released can take uh, arguably a tiny part of the credit for it succeeding, which has not really been appreciated at all. And um, it's it can only work in that direction. You can say our client didn't do anything if speedy trial uh, activates, or you can say it helped a little bit, but you can't say it made it less likely to succeed and core would have succeeded with speedy trial but then this independent release came out that screwed everything up no by compat by being compatible all we do is add likelihood that speedy trial works which is another way that i see this whole process is actually in the end collaborative and a result of the fact that everyone here just wants taproot and we're kind of helping make it happen uh we're not going we're not playing a game of chicken here we are we are being compatible. So this whole thing should work and it should get us taproot. And as Michael said, it's, you know, it's all just going to end up being hot air, but I don't think so. I think actually this will end up setting precedent as well. So we should probably uh, not dismiss it all as just hot air. And this might come, uh, this might be very important for the next soft fork up. Yeah. And I'm looking at Alejandro's site and the support from the miners is 89% of the hash rate. So it's just 1% more that that we need to. Uh, uh, um, no, but that's um, that's uh, yeah, that's uh, that's about a month old. I need to update that. Um, the, the hash rate changes, but um, what's the current? Ninety percent. What's the? I need to, I need to do the math, but um, uh, the hash rate the hash rate decreased significantly with some outages in China, and stuff like that. So so it's a it's a bit haphazard, but it's 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 the, it's the great majority the grand majority of the mining. Pools. so it's around 90 percent yeah to be clear there is a there is a slight difference but an important difference which is that alessandro has been asking mining pools if they support taproot yeah that's not yeah, actually yeah, yeah, the yeah. same thing as the actual signaling that we're going to see on the chain maybe i'm stating Correct. the obvious but i wanted to point that out yeah good point the actual signaling is starting in about a week or a couple of days i think it's four days now until five, the next adjustment Oh, yeah, right. Four, four days. Right, right. So, as a miner, what's the best way to uh, get my guys to participate? You mean as a pool, or literally? Uh, as we a have, we have, we have some skill operations. 
Yeah, so we're just we're all on pool, so I guess it's entirely up to the pool at this point. Yeah, your 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 best bet would be to ask the mining pool um to please um signal for taproot. Uh, we'll just and that goes for anyone. We're that overhauling anyone... our systems right now, so if, if if the pools aren't participating, we'll just move to a pool. Exactly. Oh uh, yeah, that's all. Exactly, like or do that. Um, and that, and that goes for everyone listening here. If you're a miner and you want taproot to get activated, please reach out to your mining pool. Uh, operator and ask them to please update or sig sorry signal um, the tap group. Thank you. We've got Sean here, another miner. How's it going, Sean? Good man. Hey, Alejandro. I was just wondering if um, that ninety percent you say is like miners you're talking to or the pools, because obviously it makes a huge difference if it all has to come from the pool, right? Uh, yeah, that's those. As, uh, if you look at the table, you see the um, percentages are are connected to, a, to pools, right? Yeah. The the, the website. Uh, the website. At the end is, of the day, uh, at the end of the day, this comes from blocks, right? And the only people that really realistically can produce an actual block uh, outside of a collaborative process is a very very lucky solo miner or a very big operation. So everyone mines collaboratively in pools. So pools are the ones that choose. Uh, whether the bit is flipped in the block they produce. So miners themselves don't have the choice beyond choosing what pool they go with. Exactly. And there's, there is, there is um, I believe, a uh, Sigma pool, that's a Russian pool, is undecided with Taproot. They have, I think, a very low amount of hash rate. But if someone here listening, which I don't think anyone here listening is in this case, but if someone here doesn't want to get Taproot uh, activated, they could go to that pool if they like. Uh, Alejandro, so I, I, I don't mean to be uh, at all antagonistic. I, I believe uh, I'm really happy with what you said and I really appreciate your input. Uh, I feel the need because this is Bitcoin and everyone is encouraged to think adversarially as, as they should. Miners do have one disincentive for Taproot that the rest of the ecosystem doesn't have, which is Schnorr signatures save space in the blockchain, so miners get less in fees. So there is literally an incentive for miners not to activate this, and uh, it's it's worthwhile remembering it, even if I if even if I assume good faith in all of the stated intent. Um, and, and Alejandro's okay. website is uh, taprootactivation.com, where he maintains a tally of the pools that support or don't support tap. I will yeah, but it just as a minor, talk, by the way, I would just argue uh, as a uh, minor, uh, this increases the utility a lot more than um, you know, this is a benefit to everyone that's holding Bitcoin. Right? Yeah, of course, taproot is amazing, and miners understand that it makes Bitcoin much better, and ultimately that translates into a higher price and more. Uh, a higher you know revenue for miners so i'm not saying miners are only incentivized against taproot uh, of course any forward thinking like approach would say taproot's obviously a benefit they're not going to just focus on slightly less fees from people making multi-sig transactions or mast or whatever like no i don't mean to imply that it's just that uh, it's worth noting that there's this that one incentive that exists for miners that doesn't exist for users I think everyone still has a little PTSD from uh, the sake. Yeah, I think that's true. <laughs> yeah, true. I'm just, you know, it makes sense to consider all the edge cases. Uh, I, like I said, I really don't think speedy trial will fail, and I really think the miners will uh, activate during that. I completely agree with you, brother. But anyway, I'm going to be updating the, the website um, after this talk. So I'll update the percentages and I will add uh, information about speedy trial on the site as well for miners. Uh, ask anyone here who is connected to a mining pool operator or is a miner mining on a mining pool, please contact your mining pool and ask them to, to, do, to do something with Taproot, whatever it is you want. Uh, this will help everyone, so please do it. And, and that, with that, I'm, I'm going to have to go. So I'll speak to you guys later. Thank you. All right, man. Thanks for thank joining. Uh, yeah, I think thank we're going to be winding down the room, too. Uh, I'd like to thank all the speakers for, for joining. Awesome conversation. If uh, I can jump in before the end. Oh, yeah, um, sure. So um, the, I would just say to everyone, yep, absolutely, as Alejandro just said, please speak to your pool. Encourage them to activate via speedy trial. Um, if, this, if for some reason we end up in a situation where speedy trial fails, 
please um, then please know that I think the, the correct approach would be to run the independent or the based client. Um, I think that would be the correct approach. And I think it would make sense to be very active and vocal about that and to, to uh, explain yourself to the community and encourage that as a means of getting Taproot in, because I don't think, um, I don't think that any other method would be as good, uh, especially given that this thing is now live and running on the network already. But before we get to that point, let's uh, let, let's try to get speedy trial in there. So please be vocal and and, and speak to the community about getting speedy trial uh, implemented or activated. Thank you. Completely agree. Thanks, man. Hey, Pete, I just wanted to say um, huge props for your piece on Satoshi and and um, your uh, appearance on Peter McCormick's podcast yesterday. It was awesome. Oh, thanks, man. Yeah, I might be on hopping on Clubhouse later this week to do a, do a Bitcoin Magazine Clubhouse focus just on that. But yeah, appreciate the read. And uh, yeah, everybody, uh, thanks for reading Bitcoin Magazine. Obviously, we'll be keeping up with the Taproot issue. Uh, tons of great stuff on it at Bitcoin 2021 as well in Miami coming up uh, only about five to six weeks away. So make sure you book your tickets for that if you haven't already. And uh, yeah, appreciate the conversation. And uh, we'll see you guys in, in the next Clubhouse. Thanks, thanks, thanks so much. Thank you. Thanks, thanks so everyone. Thanks Cheers, everyone. Thanks. thanks. Thanks for hosting, Aaron, and uh, Bitcoin Magazine. And yeah, that that Satoshi piece was fantastic. Thanks so much, everyone. Thanks for all the amazing work you developers and you 